now listening to the Stronger Inside Podcast, where we break down all things regarding health, fitness, and wellness to help you improve your mind, body, and environment. And now, your host, Wayne, a.k.a. Workout with Wayne and Ernest, a.k.a. Mr. 100 Pounds Down. Welcome back to Stronger Inside Podcast. This is episode number six. Six. Six, right? Yes, sir. All right. We're going to drop some information on you this episode. Boom. <laughs> but we, we have post-edit sound effects. We don't have to do that. <laughs> drop another one of those bombs. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need uh, the guy from Police Academy. Like, we can, I can download sounds, man. We can put it in there. <laughs> oh, okay, high speed, low drag. I got it. <laughs> All right. Um, I uh, hope we get some good uh, feedback from our last episode, which was uh, consistency, how consistency is the key. So uh, if you are being consistent, mm-hmm. you're probably going to notice some of the things we will talk about in this episode. So what we got today, Ernest? So today, what we're going to talk about are 21 signs that you are healthy. Okay, 21 signs, and this can be, uh, these are going to be majority physical signs, and then also maybe some decisions and emotional things, but they're all going to tie in, and if you can notice any, any of these things about yourself, then you're going in the right direction, and if you see that maybe some of these things you need to change, then you, maybe you're not as healthy as you think you are. Mm-hmm. This topic kind of came to mind because there are people who proclaim they're healthy or what they will use is the mystery of their medical information. Meaning because I don't have their medical file in front of them, they will tell me, how do you know I'm not healthy? Who are you to tell me that I'm not healthy? You don't know me, Mm -hmm. but they don't realize that they're wearing these signs like a uniform. Mm. I can tell. (laughs) If, if some of these signs are, are, are visible on you, then you are not as healthy as you think you are. And maybe, I'm, maybe that's, that's influencing my, my opinion. Right. And when you're not conscious of these things, then you think that you're hiding in plain sight, but you're not. So let's break it down. Uh, th- these are not going to be any, in any particular order, but uh, we'll just run down a couple of these and chime in and uh, we'll go through uh, with maybe some personal experience as well. So let's go to number one. You have thick hair and strong nails. That's something that you would probably say for a younger, a younger crowd when you, when you were a child and a baby and you had, you had thick hair. You had strong nails probably. Um, but then somewhere along the lines, maybe these things started to fall off and I don't want to say this applies to balding. You know, there's people out there with lower cuts and (laughs) they've they've come home, (laughs) as they say. Shout Uh, out to Mr. 100 Pounds. Yeah, you know, Ernest, you got the small cut, the short cut. That doesn't mean that your hair is not thick in the areas that it does grow. That could be a beard. Because that beard is looking luscious (laughs) out here today. Yeah, so so really just looking at that. um, If your hair is thinning, as brittle, uh, your nails are cracked. Um, These are signs of nutritional deficiencies, Uh, iron, vitamin D, some of these things that you need to make sure that you're getting because your nails shouldn't be breaking very easily and your hair should be strong. It shouldn't be falling out, shouldn't be thin. Um, But yeah, there there are certain things, genetic things such as, uh, you know, male pattern baldness and other things that uh, I'm pretty sure Michael Jordan has strong nails. (laughs) He just didn't have a thick head full of hair, but he was pretty healthy. So, so we'll move along. Number two, you tend to have a lot of energy. You are springing out of bed every morning. You're ready to hit the gym. You're ready to attack attack life, uh, face the day. You, you, you're just, you're just waking up with vigor. You know, what happens when you're, when you have a good routine and you are doing things the right way in the evening, when you wake up in the morning, sometimes you wake up before your alarm. Mm. If you are on a real good, uh, 
regimen and you were, you were doing the right things and you know that your, your body's so used to waking up at 6 a.m. or whatever, you might wake up at 6.55, turn your alarm off before it goes off and get, get going. 5.55. 5.55, yeah. So that, that, that is a, a, a sign um, that you have a lot of energy to start your day. Uh, I, I look forward to doing a morning routine episode and an evening routine episode to really uh, help drive home some healthy patterns. But when you have those healthy habits and uh, healthy um, day-to-day things that you that are just kind of non-negotiable, you're going to have a lot of energy going throughout your day. Absolutely. I, I think before I started, I was I was napping. I was a nap guy. Yeah, I needed a, I needed a, a afternoon nap. When my son was younger, I used to pick him up. And we would come home, and he would be sleeping. He would have been and fell asleep in the car. We get home, he would probably sleep for another hour. I would sleep that right there with him. Like, yeah, I was sluggish. I was always tired, you know. But now I'm like, I'm going. Like, I wake up in the morning, and as soon as I wake up, it's like brush your teeth, wash your face, go get a workout in, go get your workout in, knock it out. Yeah. And then good. I'm good all day long. I'm I'm good. I really don't I don't I sometimes you, you feel a little fatigued but just in being busy without uh, throughout the day. Yeah. But there's never a uh, a point where I feel like I I I got to go lay down. I got to go take a nap type of things when it's not a uh not a sleep deprived type of a situation where you know if I go to bed at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning and then still wake up because you know you have those responsibilities and you know, you kind of feel that sometimes but if I get the right amount of sleep I need, I'm good throughout the yeah, day. Yeah, that's good. Good. That's a big change, as you can see. Uh, just, just having that energy to get after it. Um, there's a phrase I use, uh, wake up hungry. And I, I, I have it on shirts. So if you, if you wake up hungry, that means that you have energy and you're doing the right things. You're not going to wake up hungry if you are, uh, like you said, uh, sleep deprived, uh, sluggish, um, hungover or whatever it is. Let's go to number three. You can deal with your own and others' emotions. And really that just means that, if, of course, we, we all have needs and we all have uh, day-to-day things, but how do you deal with those? Because this is another way that somebody can look at you in, in maybe in terms of the way that you, you act and communicate with others and say, man, man you're, you're not as healthy as you think, because if you were, you wouldn't be responding to certain things in a certain manner. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I truly believe that healthy people have a better, on average, they, they have the ability to kind of moderate their emotions and really pick and choose and they don't have the extreme highs and lows. Mm. And that, that comes with all of the other things that are going well for them in life, which provides that balance. If you don't have those other things going well for you, whether it be uh, uh, how you, the things that you're putting into your body, um, the, the rest that you may be getting, um, the, your self-esteem, all these other things come into play, you will be more likely to, have an extreme high or an extreme low and not really be able to uh, deal with your own emotions or the emotions of others. Mm-hmm. What would you say about that, Ernest? No, definitely. I think, I think there was a recent exchange between uh, my wife and I where, you know, where we were able to kind of really sit down and hash out uh, situations that were needed to be discussed. But in a previous time in our life, in our relationship, it might have led to, you know, a, a much more extreme situation or, or, or an argument where we were able to, you know, sit down and kind of communicate with each other on a on a level where it was an actual discussion and an actual, okay. um, you know, we were able to understand each other and understand the emotions of the situation and not allow it to not allow it to be bigger than what it needed to be. Yeah. Where, you know, where things can kind of go to extremes sometimes we're in that type of situation and also at work. I'm dealing with people where I don't often have conversations with where the, where the situation is a stressful situation and they are coming in angry. You know, I don't have to give them that same energy back. I can, I can take that energy. I can understand what they're saying. I can respond to them calmly, collectively with the information that they need. And you know, if they are angry and they're upset at the situation, 
then that is them. That does not have to be me. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. To where you can, you know, pretty much, <laughs> to where you can uh, absorb that energy and or deflect it, mm -hmm. and it doesn't become something that you necessarily need. There's been multiple times where there's been somebody who's, who, like you said, they've brought that energy towards you. And again, looking at these signs and kind of scanning that person and maybe even knowing that person, I can go, man, uh, I know they feel this way right now and they're responding this way because X, Y, and Z is probably not right within their life or their day or whatever's mm -hmm. going on. And it doesn't mean that I'm looking down on them. It doesn't mean that I'm, uh, it just means that I know that maybe the reaction that I'm getting or the energy that I'm getting doesn't all come from something I did. Right. You know, it, it could be, uh, <laughs> there's a word going on right now. Uh, Karen, <laughs> mm. a lot of, a lot of the Karen energy is because they're not healthy, whether it be mentally or physically. Mm -hmm. If you really look at that, because you would not, the, the videos and the things we've seen and the way, you know, you, whether you treat somebody in a store or on the street, you don't treat people like that when you have a lot of great things going for you within your own life. And when mm -hmm. you're just kind of happy and uh, you're able to deflect or uh, even absorb somebody's negative energy and continue mm -hmm. to move, you don't when go causing problems. When things are bad for you mentally or physically, small things trigger you. Yeah. And then you blow and up. That, and that, and that's exactly what, that's exactly what you're, you're seeing with these Karens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Please don't cancel us. It's just a meme. Um, you're not trying to get too political here. All right. Um, number four, good circulation. This is within, in your body, blood flow. You may occasionally, everybody has an arm or leg that falls asleep or, you know, you get that pins and needles feeling, um, but it should clear up pretty quickly. Uh, if not, and you have a consistent or a, uh, recurring tingling numbness you should get that looked at and a potential issue could be a compressed nerve uh there's things that you know where it's it's shooting down my leg or it's from my neck down to my finger if there's something like that going on or you're consistently uh having that fall asleep issue then you should get that looked at and there's probably some different things that you need to reevaluate but having good circulation is a sign of a healthy body move right along. <laughs> this one's pretty interesting. You have fresh breath. <laughs> mm. All right. Yeah. Uh, you should not have every, everybody. Of course, we, we all wake up in the morning. <laughs> we got our morning breath. You know, you, you know, you brush your teeth and do all these things. But if you're doing these other things and something still is not right, then uh, there's something wrong within. <laughs> right, right. And that's what you're gonna have to take a look at. Um, not having a pleasant breath can come from uh, some immune functions and some uh, some gut health. So you would have to take a look at that. Uh, maybe it's things that you're putting in your body. Um, there are certain nutritionists you can go to to take a look at that. But uh, you should have a balanced, healthy gut, and that's what's gonna allow for you to have. On average, you know, you should have fresh breath. It shouldn't right. be an issue. Pleasant. Pleasant. There you go. It's mm -hmm. Pleasant. Uh, yeah. So we don't want anything uh, sour seeping through. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, we'll go back to energy again. Number six, uh, you don't have that afternoon crash every day. Uh, when you feel energized to start your morning, like you said, Ernest, and you're going and you're moving, you're checking your to-do to -do list off, and you're just getting things done, you're productive, you're being active. The day goes by a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. You're probably more productive at work. You're a better employee. You're a better uh, spouse. You're a better parent. You're better at everything, right? And you don't have the afternoon crash, and you're probably not relying on coffee. You're not relying on caffeine. You're not relying on energy drinks. Please do not drink those. You know, the monsters, the Red Bulls, the, the rock stars, the what, what's oh man there's five hour one. energy five hour energy the there's another one the bang bang energy i mean they got some crazy ones and you know they're gonna and we've talked about this before read the back of the can not the front the front's gonna tell you all the things that you want to hear to manipulate you to buy it oh it's uh low sugar oh it's no sugar oh it's this 
Turn it around, read what's in it. And if you are getting to sleep, living a healthy lifestyle, eating real food, you shouldn't have to rely on two, three, four uh, shots of uh, jolts and boost of energy uh, to get yourself going. That's something that you would have to take a look at. Uh, yeah, so you, you should feel energized through your morning, maintain it, stay stable, no crashes. And then uh, really what you're doing, you, you have stable blood sugar levels. You're not having that extreme up and extreme down because that afternoon crash comes from, uh, let's say that, you know, the, the way somebody, or maybe even the way you were eating before, Ernest, to where you mm -hmm. have uh, something that is uh, very processed and has a lot of sugar um, to where you're, you're, you're going to have that spike and blood sugar, then guess what's going to happen when it goes up? What goes up must come down, right? Yeah. And then you got that crash, and you got that afternoon crash. And you, then you're sitting at work like, man, I can't wait to go home. I got the itis. I need a nap. <laughs> yeah, yeah wait, for this, wait for that slug ride home. Oh, did you, <laughs> you are the slug. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> See what you did there. Oh, I saw that. <laughs> All right. Let's go to number seven, your skin. Your skin looks healthy. You should be radiant. You right. should be glowing. What? You, you should should have that uh that airbrush look. No. Mm. <laughs> uh, no but yeah. filters. No filters. You're, yeah, you should have that natural filter. Mm -hmm. Your your skin, uh, which is actually the the largest organ on your body, uh, you should you you should be clear. Um, yeah, there's some genetic factors. Um. But yeah, your, your, your skin should be clear. You shouldn't have a lot of things going on with that because really it's just telling, it's telling you or somebody who's looking at you what you put in your body. That's really what it is. Mm -hmm. you, you're, you are telling yourself and your skin is telling you, you, these are the things you put in your body. When you're drinking enough water with the, some of the changes you've made, Ernest, when you are not eating these uh, processed foods, you're not having... Uh, unnatural sugars because yeah, you're getting sugars from fruit and things like that. But when you're when you're not eating all this grease, this Western, this Western diet, which, which we've talked about, the dairy, the cheeses, mm -hmm. all those things, especially the processed cheeses. I mean, you're eating Kraft singles. Oh man, what you you, you think you're gonna have this uh, glowing, radiant skin? No, no, probably not. Yeah, as, <laughs> as, a, as a matter of fact, when I when I don't eat those things, and then there, when there's a, you know, a time when I do eat them, even if it's a minimal amount, the next day I'll see something. I'll see something that'll pop yep. up. You yep. know, so it's 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 almost an immediate effect of. Yeah. You had you had some sugar yesterday. Like this is look at what happened to so you. Or, I'll, I'll tell you a true story. I was in. This was maybe two three months ago. I was in Rite Aid. And this this goes to tell you. Either you're uneducated or you're unwilling, right? That's a phrase I use a lot. But I seen this woman. She had, she did not have good skin. She bought a candy bar. She bought a soda. You know how they have the cigarettes behind the counter? So she had to ask the, the cashier for cigarettes. Mm -hmm. And then you know what the fourth thing was in her, in her basket? Some clear set. Some some acne uh, skincare cream product. Uh, I I just shook my head like this is. <laughs> what are you doing? Right. You're, you're you're basically, you're basically just uh, chasing your tail. Right. There there's no the the reason you are having these issues because what you're putting in your body and what you're doing to your body and then you're trying to add uh, something to your to your mix to fix the situation but mm -hmm. um and i co and i do this within my coaching and i help people i say what can you remove to make your life easier or better mm -hmm. what can you remove to get more successful not mm -hmm. what can you add because that's where we are in, as a society what can i add what product can i buy what uh what thing can i add uh what other weight loss pill powder what can i add to cover up all the poor decisions that I make. And that's basically what she was doing. Let me try to uh, <laughs> get, 
reverse all the poor decisions that I'm making in terms of uh, skin care, skin health. Mm. Yeah. Right. So, it, yeah, your, your skin tells a story. So uh, when somebody is, I hate to use those words, thin and skinny, and, you know, they think that they, they're not obese, and they're like, well, I'm healthy. And then you can look at their skin, and you're like, eh, you're probably not. You know, lay off the Mountain Dew. <laughs> Put the Marlboros down. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. You're right. You're right about that. Yeah, and, and I'm not huge on dairy. Um, that's something that I've cut out, and it is very, very, very sporadic if I – or I barely ever do it. Um, again, if I'm eating pizza or something, that's really where I just get cheese from. Other than that, just not very much. Um, and – for the most part, I, I don't really have major, major skin issues, anything like that. But when I do put something into, like you said, when you do introduce something into your, into your system that you haven't had in a while, you can see it. Yeah. You can see it. Yeah. My wife used to use a product uh, back in the day for her skin, but now that she's being more healthy, her skin has cleared up. Her skin, uh, she doesn't have to um, use those products anymore like that. Okay. I think there's just a... I think there's just a natural reliance to, you know, use face products when she washes and does that just for her face, just for her, just for a skin routine. Yeah. It's not a requirement to try to get rid of, you know, yeah. acne and things like, like that. So um, I've definitely seen it in her. Yeah. You want to be. Uh... You glowing, baby. <laughs> so number eight, your eyes, your eyes are clear. Mm. You no, know, they say the eyes are the window to the soul, right? Yes. All right. Um, so, yeah, your eyes will reveal a lot of things. Um, really, basically, if, if your eyes are white uh, around, around the pupil, they, they should be white. Uh, shouldn't be uh, bloodshot, shouldn't be yellow. You can really, you can really take a look and see, see, uh, see somebody's eyes and see what's going on with them. They should be bright, and that is a direct uh, indicator of health. Uh, it's funny, I, you know, people leave crazy comments on certain things. And I was watching this one video and it was with Pharrell. And people have always com uh, commented on how Pharrell looks young, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he may be in his early 40s or mid to late 40s, I don't know. But this guy put this comment on there, it's like, man, his eyes look so white. <laughs> He's like, his eyes look so white. But again, and that's somebody who has, who has been applauded for their skin. Uh, He's a millionaire who knows what type of processes and things he does, but your eyes and your skin are going to tell you how healthy you are. Mm -hmm. um, look at somebody uh, who's caught a lot of flack through social media. Let's talk about our man Michael Jordan again. MJ. <laughs> yeah. MJ. But they, Welcome back to the podcast. <laughs> MJ gets a lot of, <laughs> hey, we, he, the good and the bad, right? right. He's got a lot of com uh, compliments and we got a... Uh, <laughs> People have commented on his uh, on his eyes to where they're, they're a little yellow at times, you know. Right. And that could be a sign of you know, maybe jaundice or who knows what's going on. Right. Like, all the, the cigarettes and whiskey might catch up. <laughs> or excuse me, not cigarettes, cigars. Cigars, so, cigars. Yeah, yeah. So the the Big whites, <laughs> the the expensive cigarettes. Right. <laughs> the the whites of your eyes will really tell tell the story. Um, and if you look at children. How many of the children do you see with yellow bloodshot eyes? None. Not many. Their, their eyes look like uh, anime characters. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we want to preserve and keep as we get older. Right. All right. This one, this one is the controversial one. Mm -hmm. Number nine, your body fat percentage. As if your body fat percentage is normal, uh, which we've talked about a certain range, um, that's a little bit different than BMI, but depending on your age, it fluctuates. Uh, we'll probably, I'll, I'll, put up, I'll put up a chart for you guys to take a look at. I don't want to get too far off topic, but if you are not in a healthy body fat percentage, then you're not healthy. It's just that simple. Um, a lot of people don't want to admit that. Uh, there's a lot of social media and a lot of movements and different people who want to go against this thinking. But uh, like I said, I'm the bad guy of the podcast. I know the truth. You can't lie to me. Yeah. 
you, you, your metabolism, your blood sugar balance, um, your emotional well-being, all these things are going to be uh, indicators with your body fat percentage. Um, you, you are a walking example, and you've talked about all the positive changes that you have experienced in, in, within your own lifestyle, within your own body. Mm -hmm. And you can tell the difference and you can tell other people the difference. So imagine you being somebody at the beginning of your journey, uh, pushing 400, talking about I'm healthy because you did say that you did not have any um, medical medical issues, but we're not going to be naive and say that they weren't knocking on the door. Absolutely. The, the, those medical issues that you had, they were looming, but they were like the White Walkers on Game of Thrones. Yeah, man. They, they, they was going to slow walk you, and they was going to get here. It don't matter. It, maybe not season one, right. <laughs> but by season five, they was going to be knocking on your door. Maybe not at 30, 34, 35, but maybe at 39. And right. hypertension, diabetes, all those things were coming for you. Yeah. And you was ready. So Appreciate you, Appreciate you John Snow. <laughs> you you was ready so when somebody says oh i don't have anything in my mind it's dot 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 yet right winter is coming <laughs> all right <laughs> <laughs> listen no you're, you're you're a thousand percent correct you know um i'm still working on getting into that that good range you know? yeah but this is like that's this part it's all part of the process and so you know, there's definitely a, uh, my body is healthier. You know, yeah. I, I don't have the, the healthiest body that, that I want to have, but it is definitely healthier than where it was, you know, 18 yep. months ago. So yep. that's what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. So you should be working to get in that healthy body fat percentage. If you are not there yet, then you need to keep working and don't let anybody else tell you that otherwise. Don't let uh, any friends, family, anybody throw you off of your journey. Um, and have them convince you that you are doing all right and you don't need to get quote unquote too skinny or whatever these type of phrases that people use. You need to say, is my body fat here? If it's not here, I got more work to do. All right. Uh, we'll go back to the skin really quick for number 10. You don't break out in acne. Um, these are also other issues, hormonal issues um, that can be caused by acne, but the hormonal issues can be uh, not completely uh, resolved, but what we put in our body, again, affects how our body reacts. Uh, so we, we just can't, and I'm just always going to drive home the, uh, the reality that what you put in your body matters. Uh, there's a phrase that food is medicine. That's a very old phrase. I can't remember where it comes from, but food is medicine because before we had uh, all these uh, pharmaceutical companies and before we had all the doctor's offices and all these things, how do people heal themselves um, holistically through, uh, you know, what we would call a remedy or whatever it may be, different things, ginger, garlic, all these different things. If you have a real food diet, then you're going to have less possibilities of all these uh, hormonal issues and uh, skin issues, acne, which is a lighter thing. But uh, you see it, what what it was that company that got really big? I think when we were in our teens and early twenties, uh, all all the celebrities were endorsing it. The skincare company, a proactive, proactive, yeah. Yeah, Diddy, you, you get, had to get you had to get your skin like Diddy, baby. Yeah, get get proactive on your on eating clean, and uh, <laughs> a lot of things will change for you, <laughs> and you can save a lot of money. Put <laughs> that face wash and all that stuff that they're selling you. You could probably buy a lot less of it if you spend more time eating uh, vegetables and a lot mm -hmm. less processed foods. All right, uh, we're gonna go kind of sticking to the hormonal topic again. This is not something that I can personally relate to or you, Ernest, either. Uh, it's for women. Uh, if your menstrual cycle is regular, um, there, there are always other, uh, there's always exceptions to a rule. So I'm not here to condemn anybody, but I'm just saying uh, normal ovulation reflects balanced hormone levels. And a lot of times when somebody is severely overweight or severely underweight, then they're going to have uh, these erratic, erratic uh, cycles. So 
that's a part of it as well. So if, if that's something that you're experiencing, maybe you need to take a look at that and take a look at your diet and maybe some other different things going on. So moving right along. <laughs> Number 12, healthy gums. Mm. Yeah, your gums. Uh, the, sign, the sign of your gums, your gum health. Uh, if your gums are not inflamed, they're not bleeding easy, uh, they have a normal color and texture, um, you should have the normal color and texture. So really just, just, just your gums. And, and, and you can go even further, uh, your mouth. Your, your healthy, healthy bones go along with healthy teeth, uh, fresh breath, all those things that we said that are, are going together, that, that is a part of being healthy. Because we could tell. Imagine if uh, Arsenio Hall wasn't, uh, <laughs> if he didn't have healthy gums. We would know, right? <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 you definitely, you definitely. Any, any dogs in the house? What, what is this? <laughs> Arsenio. Oh, man. Uh, I just remember, I'm picturing that coming to America when they was in the club meeting all the girls. <laughs> he dressed up like the woman next to, next to Eddie Murphy. Oh, my God. <laughs> and your friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> All right, so let's go to uh, 13. This is something that a lot of people take for granted, mm. and you start to see this as we age. Uh, you can do everyday tasks with ease. So if you, if you start to find that just things that you used to do are becoming harder and harder, it's because your, your, your body is changing for the worse. It, it's just that simple. So just going on a long walk or going up a hill, going hiking, something that, you know, maybe that's not every day for you. Maybe carrying groceries, uh, touching your toes. Can you balance on one foot? Can you do a squat? Some people can't even do a squat, which is not to, you know, when I say it that way, it's not that I'm looking down on them, but think about that. Go find me a five-year-old that can't do a squat. They don't exist. <laughs> and, you, and you don't lose. The only reason people are losing the ability to do those things is because of their patterns of behavior. By the time that five-year-old gets 15, who knows what uh, type of lifestyle they're living. And in America, we're seeing children younger and younger and younger having the same issues that older populations are having to where they're losing flexibility, where they're being obese, where they're having uh, medical issues. It's almost like these preteens are the 30 year olds. If that mm -hmm. makes sense because of all the things that uh, from a, fr from a lifestyle ha have affected us. So really these everyday tasks of just being able to squat, uh, being able to, it, a squat, a lot of times people, they will not be able to squat because they can't keep their heels down and then they're going to fall. Or if they want to stay in a squat without holding anything, their heels are up because they don't have much flexibility within their calves. Um, their hips are tight. The lower, uh, their, their upper back and their, and their lats are so tight to where they have an extreme uh, forward lean to where they can't uh, squat. And these are all correctable. Um, but also, you want to be preventative. So if you are living a healthy lifestyle where you're active, uh, it goes back to that old phrase, if you don't use it, you lose it. Mm -hmm. You take that five-year-old and they move and they're active and they go and they become a teenager and they're still active and they're moving and they become a young adult, they're active and they're moving. You know, then they're 50 years old and guess what? They can still touch their toes. They can still do the splits. They can still do whatever mm -hmm. because they never stopped. I ain't doing no splits, Craig. Yeah, well, because you, <laughs> you stopped early. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I mean, think about it. Your, your son is four. Right. Three years ago. I mean, just look at how many babies have torn an ACL. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Baby out day to day. Uh, <laughs> lower lower ankle sprain no they they don't because they're mobile they're flexible and they, they're not losing it <laughs> so no, you're right you're right yeah so those those day-to-day -day tasks are 
becoming yeah. easier. You know, just walking upstairs, you know, when I was pushing 400, yeah. you know, going upstairs was, you know, that was, that was a task. Going up multiple flights of stairs was like, why don't you have an elevator? You know, you, <laughs> that was the, the workout. That yeah. was the workout. Yeah. If you was on the fifth floor in the building, you had an elevator, yo, meet me downstairs. You ain't want to go see bro, man? <laughs> hey, <listen. laughs> now, nah, man, you got to meet me downstairs. So, it, but you know, but now those those things are those things are easier. You know, walk walking the, my building. You know, I work in a very large building, and so going from point A to point B, which could be on the other side of the building, which could be uh, almost half a may potentially half a mile walk. You know, depending on which ways we got to go when the uh, building is uh, some some areas might be closed off or whatever. Yeah. You know, it could be a, a long walk. So getting over there, it's not a, it's not a chore anymore. Yeah. These, these day-to-day habits, uh, groceries, moving in groceries. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but there are times where my son is, he'll, he'll be, he's basically five now. Um, he might fall asleep on the way back from the grocery store. I, I can still pick him up, get some bags, uh, depending on how much stuff I have, and still get in the house moving because I'm active, I'm strong, I'm healthy, versus having to take, you know, multiple trips or even sometimes you'll hear people say, man, my, my kid is getting so big or he's getting so heavy or all these different things, right? It's yeah. like, really? My son's 40 pounds. It's not really that heavy. Right. I mean, you really think about it. If you're in the gym and you're moving and you're doing different things, 40 pounds shouldn't be heavy. And if you look at a lot of job descriptions where uh, it'll say sometimes must be able to move 25 pound objects or something like that, right? Right. You know, you, you've seen that. So it's like you need to be able to do these things without asking somebody else or asking for help or it being a, uh, right. something that affects you and then you're out of commission the next day. Mm. to where you you got to take a day off because you were gardening yesterday <laughs> that that yeah that that's something it's that real. you should take a look at and go man i need to make some changes so uh everyday task if you can just move through your day-to-day uh with these easy tasks then yeah you you are in a healthy space all right let's move along number 14 i guess this should have been number two <laughs> <laughs> um you should be having a bowel movement at least once a day. Mm. It's just that simple. And yeah. if you have more than one, that's fine. But you shouldn't, shouldn't be going days and days without uh, having that, that movement. Um, what you put in your body is important. I keep saying that. Um, if, if not, then something's off. Uh, it could be another uh, deficiency. Um, in terms, or maybe your body's not properly absorbing nutrients. Um, it could be stress related. Um, you just should not have that within and that build up from a on a daily, and then maybe you're only going two, three times, four times a week. That that's just not that's not healthy. And a lot of times that does go with. I keep saying it that Western diet. Mm. That Western diet, all that cheese, all that processed food, all that, all that stuff that's building up because what's really happening is you're lacking in fiber. Right. And, there, and there's different types of fiber and there's soluble fiber, which is going to uh, get, get things moving, get the party started, <laughs> per se. Right. And that, that's right. what you need in your, in your uh, diet. And when, when somebody uh, makes a change from an unhealthy lifestyle to a healthy lifestyle, uh, Usually that's what happens. Uh, that fiber kicks in and their, their body feels it. And, and they, they have a, a change in bathroom behavior. And, and it should be, it should be a, a smooth movement. Correct. Like, yeah, you should not have to struggle and strain to, to move those bowels. Yeah, it, it should be, like you said, it should just be smooth. And not to get too graphic, um, the, the, your bowel movement should be... When, you, when you're healthy and you're doing the right things, it should be like the cartoon bowel movement. <laughs> if you ever watch like South Park, <laughs> Mr. Hanky. <laughs> if you're having other things that look different and, you know, there, it's other uh, colors and smells and uh, textures and different things like that, then, again, you need to take a look at what you're putting in your body. And maybe your body's not agreeing. <laughs> yeah. 
Hey, yep. So, uh, yeah, make sure you're getting uh, some fiber within your diet, and that should come naturally if you are eating a real food diet, and that will get things moving. All right. Uh, number five or uh, 15. This is more of a, of a mindset, more of a behavior. You're not obsessed with food. Mm. You're not a quote unquote foodie. <laughs> that word, I mean, were there foodies in the 80s? Were there foodies in the 90s? <laughs> I think that foodies came when camera phones came. Oh, I like that. Then, Look at me. Look what I'm eating. Right. Chicken yeah. and waffles and syrup and take a picture. And- yeah, I'm a foodie. I think that's a I think that's a uh, an excuse. Mm. An excuse to uh have uh less structure because you you quote unquote you know basically you have turned food into a hobby right (laughs) that's like basically saying like i'm an athlete i'm going running every weekend Mm -hmm. i'm a foodie i need to go i need to like you said i need to go brunch it up i need to try every restaurant in the city i need to i need i have to now you can do that with moderation because like we said if you do everything that you're supposed to do breakfast and lunch was great and then you go out in the town and you have a, a experience a dining experience with friends or mm-hmm. with family or even by yourself treat yourself if if you do that if you do that then hey by all means uh have at it because you're doing it in moderation mm-hmm. but if if you got to hit all the spots and you still don't have a and you still don't have a control within your own behaviors and ecosystem then maybe being a foodie is not in your best interest and maybe you should need to find some other hobbies. <laughs> you can take pictures of other things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unless you're in Central Park, then you can't take pictures of the birds. Cause then, yeah. No, man. <laughs> Side, sidebar. I'm sorry. Uh, well, yeah. So yeah, you should, you should have a good relationship with food. And that's something that I really try to work through with my clients to where, um, whether we, it's talking about certain things. It's having some self-reflection and really saying, what is my relationship with food? Because that stems from, it does stem from childhood. It does stem from your, your circle of friends. It does stem from your environment, all these things. So how you deal and how you deal with stress, um, if it all involves food, then you're not going to be healthy. So if you're always a person who's always talking about food and always, oh, I got to go get a candy bar. I had a bad day. Oh, I need to do, you know, X, Y, and Z to deal, then you're probably not as healthy as you think you are. All right. Let's go to number 16. This is one that I taught my son early on, and he, he shares it a lot, which sometimes I, I just don't need to hear about it. <laughs> your urine, the color of your urine, your urine should be clear. A uh, very simple marker for health and uh, your kidneys. Uh, your kidneys keep electrolytes in your body uh, to keep the balance and they filter excess waste. So clear urine is a good sign of being well hydrated. Any dark, dark yellow, you know, you got that, that uh, it looks like that uh, lemon Gatorade. <laughs> if you got that coming out, that color, then yeah, you just need to make some changes. You need to drink some more water. You need to get hydrated. And if there's anything else, uh, then maybe you need to go see a doctor if there's anything else beyond that. But that's a very simple way to see um, how how healthy you are. Right. You you drink enough water, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna flush all those bad things out. Because yeah. when I started when I started trying to hit that, you know, 150, 175 ounces of water a day, you know, trying oh, to yeah. those marks. Every time I stood up, I had to go ahead and you know <laughs> checking them urine colors. There but, you yeah, go. So, so uh, yeah, but definitely you 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 consume the right amount of water, you're going to flush your your kidneys out, and you're you're gonna start to see a change in in your in the coloration. Exactly. I mean, even a five year old knows this. Come on, people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, another one. Your tongue is pink. Uh, it should be it should be light red, uh, pinkish hue, and it it should just not be discolored and. This kind of goes back to the oral health that we talked about, whether it be uh, the gums, the strong teeth, to where if, if you have that, the fresh breath, and your tongue is the right color, then that's another sign of health. If you have things going on within there, then 
you're going to have to make a change. That was a pretty quick, easy one. What about this? This is something that uh, not really talked about a lot, but uh, number 18, your skin bounces back when you pinch it. Uh, now, Paul, pause for a second, Wayne. How many people are pinching themselves right now? <laughs> if you just pinch yourself, please comment on our Instagram post. <laughs> that you pinch pinch yourself. yourself, grab your arm, grab your arm and see if it bounces back. Grab your forearm, grab a place, and it should just jump right back on you. If not, um, yeah, that, that, that's a quick skin test. And it, again, we can go back to the kidneys. They're responsible for the water balance in your body. You would call, if it doesn't bounce back, you could call that skin tinting or it's kind of like that delayed bounce back, which is a sign of dehydration. Um, and also you could kind of see this prolonged uh, uh, swelling and fluid overload. Um, that also can be a heart liver problem. Sometimes you'll see this in lower legs, people's ankles and different things like that to where, yeah, your skin should, it should bounce back. It, should, it shouldn't be a, like I said, skin tinting where it's just kind of stays and you got that, uh, that Play-Doh action going on. Mm. <laughs> Shouldn't be able to mold you. <laughs> Sheesh. <laughs> but no, yeah, I, yeah, I, I definitely I pinch mine, and I'm, bou I'm bouncing back. There you go. Right. Bounce back. Bounce like back. <laughs> All right, number 19. This is one that uh, was a test that back when I was you know, getting sports physicals when I was younger, I remember. Um, if you sit on the floor, cross-legged, Indian style. I don't know if that's, is that still okay to say? It's, uh, I believe it's crisscross applesauce. Crisscross applesauce. Okay. I don't want to uh, offend anyone. Like I said, please don't cancel us. Um, sitting in the floor in that manner, if you can get up without help and without using your hands, then you're in a good place. That means uh, you have good overall strength. You have good flexibility, mobility uh, within your hips, uh, core strength. And also, if you're not able to do this, maybe it could be a weight issue to where you just, you, you're just, you're not strong enough to support your own body. So if that's the case, you really need to make a change. Um, you, <laughs> you don't want to be a person who needs life alert. <laughs> mm. You know, or you, you fall and you can't get up. So really, and, and of course, you're, if you really needed to, you would use your hands. But yeah, you should be able to take a seat and get on up without using your hands. And that's something that you can go ahead and try it out. Do a test. Uh, let us know. So uh, is that something that you've ever tried or attempted prior? No, not, not from the on the floor position. Yeah. Um, I know, I remember uh, my physicals, I know I had to squat and do the little duck walk thing and some, some, some other okay. stuff. Okay. But getting up out of a chair or off the couch and things like that i do um i have noticed that i don't have to use my hands as much anymore i'm not pushing off i'm not okay you know uh, even on even when i'm you know using the bathroom uh there's no there's no need to you know push off of things to to get out get out of seated positions anymore you know i'm my legs are stronger um my my core is, is stronger i'm stronger inside so, <laughs> so I am able to to raise myself up without the assistance of you know using my hands to push off of things to get up. So okay, good, 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 good. And never from the crisscross applesauce. <laughs> crisscross applesauce. Oh man, I feel like a, a kindergarten teacher saying that one. All right, <laughs> <laughs> crisscross applesauce, duck duck goose time. Yeah, yeah, and and, and you see how quick they jump up. I'm at, okay, think about this. The, to take a state, the, the state of America right now. Mm -hmm. If I were to go on the street right now and get 12 adults <laughs> and say, we're going to play Duck, Duck, Goose. It's going to be a problem. Do you know how <laughs> 50, remember, 43% of America is obese, right? Mm hmm So you got probably fit and then the other ones are not going to have the mobility and flexibility or strength so what type of duck duck goose game could we get with the average adults in america if i just took 12 they should you should be able to hop up run around the circle chase somebody sit down without falling without hurting yourself mm -hmm. and if you can't do that if you can't play duck duck goose right now you gotta make a change throwback game throwback game <laughs> 
All right. Let's move along. This one is a more of a, a, another health measure. Uh, this is something a lot of people are more likely to uh, test than a crisscross applesauce. Will be their blood pressure. If your blood pressure is lower than uh, one nineteen over seventy nine, so the top number would be systolic, and the bottom number would be diastolic. And really. Uh, you want to make sure that you are within those ranges. Uh, I can run down some blood pressure categories for you. Um, a normal range would be less than 120 and less than 80. So less than 120, less than 80. Then elevated would be 120 through 129 systolic. And then, again, less than 80 uh, diastolic. And then uh, stage one, high blood pressure would be 130 over 139. And then upper and then lower would be 80 through 89. That's when you're stage one. Stage two hypertension, high blood pressure would be 140 or higher and 90 or higher. And then hypertensive crisis consult your doctor immediately would be higher than 180 and higher than 120 but uh unfortunately right now i believe some of these stations that people use in, uh, in the right aid cvs's um the, like higgy i believe is one company uh they put these blood pressure stations in these uh pharmacies um and you can use them. All you do is sign up for free and you can use it periodically. That's something that I've done to where every couple months, um, just to be curious, honestly, I'm just, I'm just, I'm a data person. Um, but going in there and taking a look um, because of, I believe, you know, the outbreak, COVID-19, uh, they've shut those things down just because of public use. Um, they're not using them right now, but if you, if they're open in your area or if you see them uh, back going again, please, you know, once a week, bi-weekly, hop in there and take a look at your blood pressure and really see what's going on. And when you make some healthy changes, go back. And if you see a trend going downward, then that's another incentive for you to continue doing what you're doing. It's not just chasing the scale, but saying, hey, I'm actually healthier. Right. Yeah. Is that something that you've done? I mean, over the span, you've been to the, your doctor or something like that to take a look? Yeah, so yeah, definitely. So I've gone to the doctor and they have, my doctor has even commented on, you know, the changes like, Ernest, you're doing great. Uh, I, I love, I love that you, you know, you're dropping your, the, your body weight and, you know, they, they focus more on the BMI charts and things like that. And so, yeah. so my doctor even said, so he asked me, he's like, can I use you as an example to my other, to my other patient? Oh, look you know? at that. Yeah. I, I was, I was, I was, I was proud. You know? <laughs> so I was like, uh, of course, um, yeah, of course you can, but um, they definitely saw uh, the changes and, you know, I could definitely see the, uh, the benefits and the the positive uh, blood pressures uh, readings and things like that. So um, I think they were, uh, I might have had like maybe a high blood pressure reading like once or twice, you know, prior to, you know, nothing that was consistent and that caused any like um, big concerns. But, yeah. you know, but def I'm definitely in a, um, a more sustainable, healthier range now. Good. Good, good. Those are those are the changes. Those are the things that you don't see when uh, I'm just looking at you. But again, if if somebody is severely uh, obese, you can't fool me. I uh, I know that some of these things are going on. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it be the blood pressure or these other things. So again, somebody is saying from the outside, "How do you know?" And it's like just cut off the charade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah just cut it out cut it out all right the last one mm -hmm. uh, number 21 21 we'll go back to the nails uh there is a if you look at your fingers right now you turn take a look uh there's something called a loon you lay loon you you a loon you lay say that one three times yeah buddy yeah the loon you lay and what it is is this little uh, half moon that is right where your where your skin and nail meets, and 
it should be this that little clear kind of ha uh, half moon right there. Uh, you should have that. Now, on some fingers, it might be a little bit lower. Uh, some people kind of only have them on their thumbs, but that is something that uh, it, it, it is a factor. It's not it's not a hundred percent. Like I said, there are exceptions to the rule, um, but if you don't see them at all, maybe it's something to take a look at. Uh, some cases, um, some people do have them maybe under their skin, um, but that is something that you should take a look at, and it can be associated. A lack of those could be associated with uh, anemia malnutrition depression uh all these other things so these healthy nails strong hair skin when you see somebody who has all those things going for themselves then you can say yeah that person is healthy because uh we'll, we'll look at it this way usually what happens is when somebody is very lean we say oh they look great they look healthy right but you can actually be ripped and shredded possibly and have a lot of these issues so yeah. that doesn't necessarily mean health so because and it might feel like i'm picking on people that may be uh larger where they are obese overweight and i and i'm picking on them saying oh you're not healthy no i'm saying that even on the flip side a person who is very lean can also be unhealthy. So by looking at their skin, looking at their hair, looking at their nails, looking at uh, you know their breath and their gums and all these other things, uh, their blood pressure, that person could be living an unhealthy lifestyle. They're just very uh, active, and they have they're in a caloric deficit. It doesn't even mean they're eating healthy. It just means they're in a caloric deficit. Does that make sense? Maybe right. they eat McDonald's once a <laughs> once a day. <laughs> And then they go work out. Yeah, definitely. So now, so now, yeah, you, you still got acne. You just got a six pack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, that's not healthy either. So really uh, being your best healthy self, whether it, it, combining these factors is really what you want. You want to be lean, but you want to have good skin. You want to have all these healthy factors. And that is what really what we're working towards. So we're just being your most healthy best self and these are physical these are all physical signs of that i think these are these are these are great these are good practical things that people can look at to kind of determine where they kind of fit you know is there something on this list that um that they see in themselves that they say oh well yeah i do my my, my urine is a more on the yellow side maybe i maybe i can drink some more water or yeah. uh, maybe I, I am feeling more tired in the middle of the, of the day you know, uh, maybe I need to incorporate some more exercise or, yeah. um, or I need to change my routine up a little bit about what I'm consuming so I don't crash as hard. Maybe there's other foods I can eat that can sustain me for longer periods of time. So, yep. um, yeah, this, this list is great. And also, these things are going to change before you lose 50 pounds, before you lose 60 pounds. These things are all going to change before that. Mm -hmm. and, and you notice that. So that's why... Uh, I always say the goal is to feel better first and then continue those habits. And then later on, uh, the things will catch up in terms of, of the weight loss or whatever uh, you're looking forward to, whether, whether it be improving performance or, or anything like that. So, yeah, these things are going to happen first. And when you can start checking off all these markers, you're going to be in a really good place. So I, I hope that that was helpful and like you said, Ernest, some people can really uh, apply that to their life and start to measure themselves possibly different because I always like to have other metrics than the scale to measure success. Yep. And this is a great non-scale list, non-picture, non-how-you-look non list mm -hmm. of things that you can help change and put yourself in a really good position to have success. There we go. All right. Well, that has been another episode of Stronger Inside. Until next time. We out of here. All right.